Hello fellow riders, this is your host Rusty James. It's Wednesday, January 6, 2016, and this is the ride. Well, I thought I'd get right into it. You know, I need to hear from God today. I need to hear wisdom. I need to hear what people call a rhema word. I need to hear what God has to say for my situation today. And if you were honest with me, you'd say the same thing. We all need to hear the wisdom we need right now. We need to hear it. We need to know what it is. And of course, I'm always telling us we need to go to the Word of God to get that word. It is a rhema word. It is a word in season and I didn't get a chance to this morning so I'm asking the Lord right now Lord implant some wisdom into this time wisdom that we can use today and I believe right now that um, by the end of this thing I'm gonna have a direction to go I believe it it's kind of weird but I believe it you guys know who Pentatonix is? If you've been on social media or if you're into music, you probably do. They're an a cappella group and they've basically formed very organically um, and got into the spotlight probably in the last, I want to say, last five years. Saw something on Netflix about them. It was kind of a documentary, rise to fame kind of piece. Even if you're not into a cappella music, you would enjoy this. You need to check out Pentatonix uh, on YouTube. You'll find some cool stuff there. But uh, the thing that I was thinking about through the whole thing is, you know, they're telling their story and a couple of them grew up. I think two of the males grew up uh, very close and uh, sung together for a while and then the gal joined in and so at one point there was three of them and then when they were um, getting ready to go into a competition I don't know if it's called sing-off or whatever it was but it was an acapella thing and they just destroyed the competition I'm telling you I mean, there was good competitors there, but they had this thing. They had added a bass singer and a beatboxer who happens to play cello, and he's really awesome. And he appears to be a devoted Christian, uh, um, best I could tell from that video. So anyway, um, that combination, that five pentatonics, um, they just rocked that competition, blew it away. Since then, they've won a Grammy and have been touring the world and the rest is history kind of thing. So I got to thinking, because while I'm watching this piece, I'm realizing that, you know, we all do this. We place celebrities on a pedestal. We do it. I, I know we do it. I know I do it and I know you do it. We somehow think that they're not, they're 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 not the same person as the rest of us, normals. We do it. I don't know why. And down deep, we know that you know they're just as human as the rest of us. We know that. We know that God loves them, no more, no less than the rest of us. But somehow we, we create this fake persona around somebody that is well known well i love this show because it really just showed them as normal people you know the the girl when she when they're on tour she um tends to get sick which affects could affect the performances just like you know just like your sister would get sick just like a normal person normal people and you and you're watching them live their lives like normal people except for the fact that they have this incredible what i'll tell you right now is a god a god there's a word i'm looking for hold on 
I was going to say God-given talent. That's not quite right. It's a God-given potential. I'll explain in a minute. But I believe it's from heaven. But I believe that good things, no matter what they are, whether you're a cabinet maker or a plumber or a street sweeper, things that are good, they do come from God. Good gifts come from God. Those are benefits to us all, those, all of those things. So I believe that good things come from our Father, but I phrased it in the way I did, God-given potential, because just like yesterday's podcast about the feast and whether you're gonna sit at the table or not, the feast that God has provided, his provision, well, I believe God gave talent to all those members of Pentatonix, for example. But he gave the potential. He gave them potential. Because they had to work at their talent. They didn't wake up one day and boom, I've got talent. I got talent. I'm gonna rake in my money and that's what life's all about. Man, if life was all about money, that would be pretty sad. I've told you this in the past, life is about relationships, man. It's good to get money. It means that you can buy stuff like what you need, like food and shelter. But man, if it's all about that, that's pretty sad. I heard a great quote recently. I'm gonna get it slightly wrong, I'm sure, but somebody said something like, trying to just buy things to fill up your house and just to buy things to have things to try to satisfy you it's like taping sandwiches all over your body because you're hungry the stuff the stuff is just the stuff you know the stuff's gonna melt away and burn away and rust away and it's the things that stick around that are important those relationships cool thing with pentatonics is they have such a strong relationship with some of the core members they grew up together and I'm sure that that's an element to why they're able to work with each other because you know working on tour with people they kind of showed that a little bit that you know it can be tough but they had to work at using the potential that God gave them to develop their skill I believe God gave them potential, but they had to work it. So just like how I started this podcast, I need a word from God. I need a word from God today. Well, I've got a word from God today and tomorrow and the next day. It's in the word of God, for one. I also want, I would like it if you would speak to me about my current situation and really give me a, 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 an answer there. But I believe just like the potential God has given the, the Pentatonix crew, He's given us potential too, but we have to practice and work our craft. And if we don't even know what that craft is, then we just need to be obedient to the Word of God. And the more that happens, the more clear your mind is. And the more clear your mind is, the more in tune you are with the Spirit of God, the more in tune you are with the will of the Father, the more in tune you are with what your skills can do in alignment with the will of the Father and boom, bang, boom, it becomes easier to find out what he's saying that day. It's an obedience. It's kind of like, you know, if you're a singer and you don't work on your scales and you don't work on your listening for harmonies, you don't work on eating right and fueling your instrument appropriately, you are gonna have some problems. You know, what's fascinating about the, the group Pentatonix is they don't use any backtracks. What you get is what they're putting out that night. That's why it's so important that they eat right. My guess is that they don't go crazy partying and do the crazy kind of stuff that most people would associate with a band that's on tour. No, their instrument is their voice and they have got to protect it you've got to protect your instrument and you got to feed yourself appropriately 
You know, if they went out and partied, because, hey, woo woo, we're pentatonics. We rock. Everybody loves us. Let's go out and party. And then the next morning, hungover, messed over, voice cracking, and they're in the next town needing to perform. I don't think that happens. That shows me that there is some maturity there. So as it relates to our life, we need to be walking in some maturity. Doesn't mean they don't have fun. Don't, don't misunderstand me. There was a comment made by one of the singers, actually probably a couple of them, and it, I'm sure it's true for all of them, that they are living the dream that they had. They are actually living, I think um, Avi said something like, uh, he's the bass. He said something like, you know, imagine the thing that you would, the, the most perfect thing that you could be doing. If money wasn't an object and all this kind of stuff. He says, that's what we're doing right now. Man, was that a sobering thought. They didn't wake up and have this. They had to work hard. They had to, they had to, you know, we don't even know how much practice time they put in to make sure their harmonies are tight. You can't just off the cuff do this stuff. They had to work through disagreements with how to do whatever they do. And it just comes out sounding like it's pure heaven. But they had to work it. They had to be disciplined. They had to be obedient to the discipline. So I want to hear from God today. I need to be obedient to his discipline. And then things clear up. And I can be living, like Ivy said, I can be living my dream. You can be living your dream. You know, your, your deal might be the cabinet maker. I've met a guy who's a cabinet maker. He is living his dream. Just like the group Pentatonics, just like their dream, this guy, his dream was that. He used to be a chiropractor. And one year he said, you know, this is not satisfying my dream. And so he stopped doing that, and I don't know how the, he melded into the next thing. I mean, he's probably smart about it and started to de develop a clientele before he, you know, switched, switched from his day job. But whatever the method, he sought after what his heart was seeking after. My encouragement to you today is if you don't know what that is, then seek after the one who gives you the dream. Our God is a good father and he wants his children to have a satisfactory life, a more than enough kind of life. And I believe that's possible when we know what our dream is and we're able to pursue it. He's given all the potential to us. God has given us all the potential we need. It just, on our part, it just takes some obedience to what we already know. Let's just clear out the clutter, you know what I mean? Focus on what's important, focus on our Father. And when we do that, He's faithful. You know, your thing might be, you love to create things. Last night I was at a place where they fabricate metal components for a very popular electric vehicle. And I saw some cool stuff. And you better believe that some of those engineers there, they love what they do because they are a major part of a major machine that the world knows about. So I want to be part of a major movement. That movement is the body of Christ. It's been around forever, but there's movements, there's flows new flows. There's a 2016 flow of God through his people. I want to be part of that. Next year is 2017 and I want to be part of that flow too. And that flow changes. It moves around. It's, it's living. But it's all based on the unchanging love of our Father. I think if I was in pentatonics, 
I'd be so excited for the next thing. Because it's clear to me that God has brought them this far. Their talent has brought them this far, but they got the talent from the throne of heaven. That's what I believe. They got the potential. And what God has fueled, man, devil, you get out of the way. Because there ain't no stopping this train. Whether you're in a vocal group, a cabinet maker, plumber, street sweeper, or car part manufacturer, whatever your deal is, if you're fueled by the potential of God, devil, you can't stop that. Let's live obedient and all that other junk that tends to stick around in our lives, it'll start falling off, I promise. We need to stay strong in that word, folks. We need to stay strong in that word. You need to believe it. I'm going to sign off with this last bit of wisdom. You know, um, I don't remember who it was from the group, but they had said, from Pentatonix, they had said they felt that, that there was a bigger thing, there was a bigger call on their life. Something like this. I don't know if they use the word call or, or whatever it was, but they knew there was this, this potential. They knew there was this potential. They just didn't see, you know, in high school or whatever it was, it, they just didn't see the, the fruition of it. But the potential, it was tangible. Well, let me tell you something today. Your potential is tangible. You can put your hands around it. You can squeeze it. It's solid. There's mass to that thing. It's potential for your life. And these are not just words I'm spewing. This is the fact. Guaranteed, you put God first, He will clear your mind and He will set your feet solid on a tangible purpose for you. I want you to believe that today, okay? I need you to believe that. God has not forgotten you, has not forsaken you, and He knows where you've been and He knows where you're headed. And He knows where you could be headed. Let's mature, let's be obedient, let's shed the things that are just not worthy, that are wasting our time, shed those things, and let the clarity of God reveal that potential that He's already placed in your path. You do that and this year is going to just blow your mind. I believe it. I certainly believe it. This ain't just hype. I feel this is the word of God giving us some encouragement today. And maybe this is the word I needed to hear after all. So thank you, Lord God. Okay, everyone, you stay in that word and you live in peace, praying for those who persecute you. And you know what? The word of God never, ever, 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 ever has failed or will fail. So you stay strong in that. Let the potential of the Lord God Almighty direct your steps. And I will see you on the flip.